pleasant good morning to everybody good morning just want to see your smiling faces so everybody happy yeah yes all right everybody happy today yes we're happy all right hmm. well first and foremost i would like to um say um good morning to our brother elvin and sister um Dali. back good morning nice to see you and um the uh, son of Sister Jesse is here. I met him uh, while I got the back. Good morning. It's nice to see everybody. And for those who are in our Zoom platform, a very, very good morning to everybody. And again, a very, very good morning to all of you. Okay. Now, for the past months, we've been talking about how to be happy. And I hope that right till this moment, you are all happy because you have the Lord in your heart. Okay. Now, if you really want to have a joyful life, you know, live a Christ-centered life. Well, remember that joy starts with God. Okay. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. Now, what God did was amazing. I will show you what God did and why is it amazing? Matthew 1, 23. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. Now, when he sent his only son to this world, he not only made his presence felt, but he made his presence seen by all. Okay, God made the intangible tangible, the unseen seen. Okay? The feeling of the so called joy, which is intangible, as we all know, becomes something that is seen in the embodiment of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The people now saw what joy looks like when they saw Jesus Christ, when Christ was born. God, who is joy, is now with us. Okay? Joy is with us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, look at this verse. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Look to verse 10. Now, God the Father made it clear that in Jesus, there is our great joy. In Jesus Christ is our great joy. Isn't it amazing that God went to the extent of humbling his only son to be here with us? Just like you and I. Okay? He was born a human being so that we can put our faith in Jesus and have real joy. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine? God sending his own son to be with you. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Now, here's a question. Do you know what is the greatest sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ? And I know what comes to your mind. His death on the cross, right? Now, without batting an eyelash, that would be your answer. But my answer is different. <laughs> my answer is different. My answer is, his greatest sacrifice is accepting full, with full humility, being stripped of his glory by having taken the form of a slave, being made in likeness of man. His first ever sacrifice, and his greatest sacrifice, is when he accepted from God that he would be born in this world. You see, his death on the cross is the culmination of his servanthood. And it was indeed a great sacrifice, no doubt about it. But accepting first that servanthood, you know, be born in human likeness, emptying himself, 
of that glory he once held in heaven, that is his greatest sacrifice. Because when Jesus accepted that, he already accepted his future death on the cross. Okay? He knew that at the moment he comes down from heaven and be like one of you, like one of us, his own creation, that is waiting for him. Philippians chapter 2 says, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. You see, my brothers and sisters and friends, the greatest sacrifice that Jesus did was when he accepted the role of becoming a servant. When he was born into this earth to be like you and I. And then that on the cross is part of that great plan of salvation of our Lord. Now, here's another question. Well, Brother Mike, you've been talking about rejoicing the Lord, having Christ centered, blah, 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 you know, for so many weeks until now. But who is Jesus Christ? Who is he that I should put my faith in that person? Okay. The question now is, who is this Jesus? In order for us to have that joy. Who is this Jesus? And what is it that I need to put my joy in him? Okay. Why is there such a great joy in this Jesus Christ? Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Now, we will talk about who this Jesus is in the context of He being our Savior. Okay? He being our Savior. Matthew 1.21, She will bear a son, and you shall call His name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus was born not just an ordinary man, not just an ordinary person. He will bear your sins, my sins, and he is our Savior. Now, interestingly, my dear brethren and friends, they say that this time of the year is about Jesus, right? Right? But, you know, when you have Jesus in your life, when you live a truly Christ-centered life, every year, every year is about Jesus. Every day is about Jesus Christ. Not only this time of the year. Amen to that? Now, okay. unfortunately, this is the reality. The reality is, they say that the sum of the year is about Jesus Christ, but the reality is it is more about us rather than the man himself. It is more about you and I rather than Jesus Christ himself. You know, all the business, all the festivities, it is not really about Jesus Christ, to be honest. It is really, in general, about people, about us. Right? The name Jesus means Savior. He will save us from our sins. But what did the people do during these such festivities? Booze, vices, right? And other things that we know are not acceptable to Jesus. Now, all those sins, the very reason why Jesus was born, because of that sin. Okay? And where there is sin, Jesus is not there. When you live a sinful life, definitely Jesus is not living in your life. And we say that this is about Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. Eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. 
Now you see that the gift of God is who? Is our Lord, Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus was born to give us eternal life in heaven because of our problem with sin. Because of my problem with sin. And there can be no joy if we die in our sins. Definitely. That is the wages of sin. And throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 13, verse 50. You know, in eternal death, there is no joy. My dear brothers, sisters, and friends, there is no joy. When you are weeping, when tears roll down from your eyes, it's not about joy. There is no joy in that. When you are gnashing your teeth, there's also no joy in that. Sin when only brings weeping because of eternal punishment. Now, no matter how healthy you are, no matter how wealthy you are, how successful you are, without Jesus in your life, there is really no joy. You know, comedian Dave Chappelle once said, the higher up I went, the less happy I was. You see, that's everything. He can buy everything he wants. But he said, the higher up I went, the less happy I was. Naval Ravikant, an Indian entrepreneur, he said, material progress doesn't make us happier. If it did, the ancients must have been a miserable bunch. Instead, we compete for status. And that is right. I believe so. You know, the observation is right. And I know for a fact that you also have that kind of observation. Okay? If truly material things makes us happy, then probably I am one of those miserable persons. But I am not. I am so happy. I always smile because I have God in my life. Most of the time, our desire to have more is simply because we want to show off. We are competing with the other guy. We are competing with the other person. See? Now, here's another interesting scenario. Brother Ryan, Brother Ryan, what if what if, hypothetical, what if you are the last person on earth? Nobody around you. Will your wealth matter? Why not? You're the richest person. Why not? You have everything. You are the only person alive. You can run the whole world. Will that matter? You get the point? See? It does not matter. My dear brothers, sisters, and friends, all the wealth in this world, it does not matter. You know why it matters? Because we want to show up. Because, you see, we compete for a status. In general, in principle, that is correct. That is right. And here is what Jesus had to say. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The resting word. The resting. Now, Jesus is talking about what real happiness in this text. He is talking about real happiness. He explicitly said that real joy is not found in having all the riches of this world. It is not found in everything that they created. No. Now think about this. If it does, then you and I, we don't have, we don't have a need for God. Right? If all material things, if what God created can make you really happy, you don't have a need for Jesus Christ. 
You don't need God. You don't have a need to put your faith in Jesus. You don't have to be here every Sunday. You don't have to sit there every Sunday and listen to me. And I don't have to be here in front of you talking about Jesus, talking about happiness. I should be back home with my family, with my wife, with my children, sitting, relaxing, drinking my favorite coffee. Right? But no, it's not that way. that way. Now, here's another thing. What can you possibly give in exchange for your soul? What can you give God that God don't have? Nothing. Nothing. All that you have comes from God. Now, if anybody here, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are here today, or listening to me in Zoom, or in the social media platform, here is my question. For how long will you be sitting here? For how long will you listen to all the preachings every Sunday until you realize that you are a sinner and you need Jesus in your life. For how long? Now you might say, you know, Brother Mike, I'm still trying to study the Bible. You know, Brother Mike, uh, with lots of religion today, I don't know which one is the right one. You know, Brother Mike, I'm looking and waiting for a sign. 20 years you've been sitting here, you've been listening to preachers every Sunday, and you're waiting for a sign? For 20 years? Now, let me tell you, that is good. You have a good intention. Okay. But the question is for how long? You might not see to live another day. Right or wrong? Right. A friend of mine a friend of mine, you know, just sitting, watching his favorite show on TV after his meal, after a few moments, his family saw him dead. That is true. That is true. That's the reality. When I accepted the Lord, I am also, also starting my journey. There's so much question still lingering on my head. Until now, I always say I'm a work in progress. No, I don't know everything. If you tell me if I memorize the Bible, I will say no. No. I don't know everything about the Bible. When Apostle Paul accepted the Lord, when he was baptized into Christ, he does not know all about Christ. He knew Jesus as the enemy. After being baptized into Christ, that's the time he went out and preached Jesus as the Son of God. In Acts chapter 9, 4 and 6, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. At this point in time in Paul, in Paul's life, Paul knew that he made a terrible thing, that he made a grave sin to the Lord. That he was a sinner persecuting Jesus and his followers. And now, how did I know that? In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, Apostle Paul said, This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He was born to save you and I. And he said, I am. The worst of them all. Apostle Paul considered himself the worst sinner of all. That's why when Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, he followed what Jesus told him to do. And he was baptized into the Lord. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up 
and was baptized. After realizing his sins, Paul accepted Jesus Christ. And he was baptized into his name. Paul, you know, didn't need to say to Jesus, you know, wait, Lord, let me first study the Bible. Oh, wait, Lord. Okay. Let me know who you really are. Or, you know, wait, Lord, let me wait and look for a sign. No. Once it was upon him that he is a sinner, he fell to the ground, he accepted the Lord, and he was baptized into Christ. Paul knew the importance of time. The importance of time. He valued time in view of salvation. That's why he said, for God says, at just the right time, I heard you. I guess all of you are hearing me clearly. All those that are in, a, in our Zoom and all those who will be watching this soon are hearing me clearly as well. I heard you. On the day of salvation, I help you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. So, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. You see, now is the right time, not later. You might not see later. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. The Bible said, it is an urgent call not to delay. Not even a minute or a second. Every time we choose not to repent and not to heed the call of Jesus, we will soon forget the need of repentance. And we will soon forget who Jesus is. And we will soon forget the need for salvation. Because our hearts get callous and gets harder and harder and harder every single day. If you say no today while hearing these words and being reminded, it will be easier for, for you to say no tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Because nobody is reminding you again. And because the devil is trying so hard as well to forget your need about Jesus Christ. If we are trying so hard, if I am trying so hard to make a sense out of you to accept Jesus in your life, the devil is trying ten times harder for you to cover your ears so that you won't hear a single word that I'm saying to you right now. Now, for those who have accepted Jesus, and was baptized into his name. This is just to remind all of us. Maybe, just maybe, you are thinking to yourself, oh, I'm all good. Oh, I was already baptized, brother Mike, so I'm good. But, let me just remind you, reminder to all of us, if we continue, if you continue to live in your sins, even if you're baptized, now you need to listen, and study this again. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then get entangled up and slave by sin again, they are worse off than before. They prove the truth of this proverb. A dog returns to its vomit. And another says, a wash pig returns to the mud. See, sometimes there are fellow brothers and sisters they think that they are standing on the solid ground. Good. But this is just a reminder for all of us that let us be assured that we are indeed standing on the solid ground. Many people today 
including those professing that they are Christians. They say, I am saved because I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am saved because I was baptized already. When we go and remind them about the gospel, they will say, yes, I know that already, Brother Mike. Been reading that all day long. Yes, they know it. But they forgot to abide by it. That's the difference. Knowing and living is two totally different things. Okay? They live in sin again. It seems like, you know, baptism is their badge of honor. See? It's like it's a badge of honor, you know, that they will show when they face judgment seat of the Lord. Okay? And they will say, look, God, this is my baptismal certificate. I was baptized. I'm good, huh? Can I come in? See, even if you prayed many prayers all your life, accepted the Lord over and over again and was baptized, but if you continue to live in your sins, you will not enter heaven because sin lives in you and not Christ. I think I saw someone at the back, <laughs> at the... There's someone trying to get inside. Okay. Thank you, Brother Rex. Now, as I was saying, your badge of honor is not your baptismal certificate, my brothers and sisters. Your badge of honor is Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ. Jesus must be living in you and not sin. Make no mistake about it, my dear brothers and sisters. That is why having real joy is a Christ-centered life and not a sin-centered life. In the same way, I tell you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous ones who do not need to repent. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. When you accept the Lord, it is not only you that are rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing with you as well. In the presence of God's angel, there is rejoicing. Now you see, True joy happens when you learn to accept Jesus Christ and live a truly Christ-centered life. For this is the only time, I will repeat, this is the only time where heaven is rejoicing. Therefore, without Christ, in all aspects of your life, God is not happy. Heaven is not rejoicing. Jesus said, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the sin of man? In some translations, it says, because you follow Jesus or you follow the Son of Man. Now, when you have Jesus in your life, it says there's already joy in you. You are already blessed. Okay? Now, Jesus tells his follower. What is their status when people insult you because of him? They said, he said, they are blessed. You are blessed. You are happy. By a principle, you know, there is joy. There is blessedness when you have Jesus in your life because people will not hate you. They will not insult you if you don't follow Jesus Christ. Correct? Now, you see, people will hate you because of what you have. And what you have is Jesus Christ. They will hate you for it. And what Jesus brings to the table for you. And what is that? He brings happiness to the table. He brings joy. He brings blessedness to you. And people hate you. People will be envious of you because you are happy. When they see, when you, when your friends, colleagues, Always see you smiling. Always see you happy. Sometimes they are envious of you. 
You see, when you are happy because you have a Christ-centered life, the devil wants to take that happiness away from you by making your friends, even your relatives, your colleagues, your churchmates, even your acquaintances, envious of you and say a lot of fake news against you. Right? Now you cannot, sometimes I do not trust the news anymore. I don't know if they are telling the truth or if they are telling lies. So we must be very careful. Now a uh, philosopher once said, Seneca once said, envy of other people shows how they are unhappy. Their continual attention to others' behavior show how they are boring. You see? You know, when people hate you, when people are envious of you, it only says that they are unhappy and they are a boring individual. So, so be glad. Be glad because you are blessed. Be glad because you have Christ in your life. Be glad when people, you know, circulate fake news about you. Now tell them, oh, you have an unhappy life. You have a unhappy childhood. <laughs> they are boring. Another uh, quote, another person once said, remember, those that try to destroy your happiness do so out of jealousy. They are unhappy with their own miserable lives because they want you to be miserable also. That's why they try to bring you down because their life is miserable. Okay. Now, Brother Ed Rivera, uh, volunteer, volunteer. Can I ask you something? Are you happy? Can you show the congregation how happy you are? Do you want to leap for joy? No. You see, he said he was happy, you know, and. If we are happy, sometimes, what if, for example, Brother Ed, what if, uh, just for example, you won the lottery, for example, 10 billion dollar, dollar says. Can we see your reaction? Huh? Just for example. You don't know. But you will be happy, of course. You will be happy. You give it away. Very good. You know, the Bible said, leap for joy. When you're happy, you leap for joy. Yes! Can someone take my picture? The Bible said, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Because, because of what? Because of what? Great. Your reward in heaven. More than 10 billion dollars. <laughs> dollar says, Jesus said, rejoice in that day and live for joy. Because great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See? What can be more joyful than that? Amen? What can be joyful than having a great reward in heaven? Can there be any joyfuler than that? Is that a word, joyfuler? <laughs> can there be any, you know, higher than that? No. No. But the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. And this is in reference to our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why Jesus was born to save us from our sins and give us hope and give us great joy. Are you not joyful? Are you not joyful that you have Christ in your life? Yes, I am. Even though we have problems, we are joyful. Even though we have 
you know, tribulations, we are joyful because God enabled us to do so because we have Christ in our hearts and we live a Christ-centered life. Now, knowing Jesus, what's his purpose in coming here and following him? That is a Christ-centered life. Without Christ, whatever you do, whatever I do, we will all be miserable here and definitely miserable in the afterlife forever. And that is the truth. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you find yourself living in sin today, repent. Repent. If you feel you're lacking in zeal, in zealousness, lacking in time for the Lord because you are busy in some other things. I want you to please reassess your life and priorities. Now, my dear friends and relatives, if you are still, if you still not accepted the Lord Jesus the right way, my question is, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Ask yourself this question. Are you going to heaven? When you die. If your answer is yes, then ask this question again. Is it based on the Bible or just based on your feelings? If your answer is it is based on the Bible, then good. But if your answer is based on your feelings, based on your gut, as they say, let me help you. Let us help you. If you're not going to heaven, and unsure of it, again, what are you waiting for? As they were traveling down the, good, the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he ordered the chariot to stop. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he was baptized. You know, all the Ethiopian eunuch need to learn who Jesus was and what Jesus did. Then he declared that he believed that Jesus is the Son of God. That's all he needed. Then he repented and was baptized. The eunuch doesn't need to know all about the Bible. He just needs to know who Jesus is and what Jesus did. My friends and relatives, those who will be watching us, watching us and will be watching this. I know that you have heard this for so long. I know that you know who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you. I know that for a fact. You have known Jesus for so long. Again, my question is, what are you waiting for? Repent now. There's water here. And there's water everywhere. It is no excuse. Accept the Lord and be baptized into the Lord's name. And for all of us, my dear brothers and sisters, continue to be faithful. Continue to be faithful. If you feel like you're living in sin again, repent. Come forward. Let us pray for you. Let the elders help you. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, let us live a Christ-centered life. By knowing who Jesus really is. By knowing that Jesus, my Savior, your Savior, was born. And he died on the cross for you and I. I invite you to come forward as our song leader, Brother Ryan, lead us in our invitation song. Good morning.